Hi, and welcome to lesson two on quantum mechanics for quantum communication. In this lesson, we will learn about quantum states. We will learn how to write them down, what they represent, and how they differ from classical states, and particularly classical bits. Then we will move on to learning how to operate quantum states, how to process them, how to extract information from them using measurements, and finally we will con conclude by looking at multiple uh, uh, quantum states and how to describe them. So, let's begin. Step one is on quantum bits, also known as qubits. So we have seen in the previous lesson that all the information can be represented by classical bits, and particularly in the classical world. You have zeros and you have ones. So classical bits can only be in two states. It can either be in a zero, like here, or it can be fully in one, nothing in between. Whereas the quantum bit, as I said, a qubit, can be anything in between. It can be 100% uh, zero, it can also be 100% one, but it can also be 50% zero and 50% one. And such a state is called a superposition. It's not that we don't know what the state is, it really is neither zero nor one, but it's somewhere in between. So how do we write down a general quantum state of a qubit? Well, the most common notation is called the Dirac notation. And it's extremely useful. It's written like this, with this funny, funny square bracket. And the symbol Psi, Greek letter Psi, is normally used to describe a general uh, state of a quantum bit. So we, this is pronounced a ket, and we're going to be calling it state Psi or ket Psi interchangeably. And that is equal to a superposition of a zero and a one. This zero is called, are called the basis states, and they, they determine uh, uh, what our state is. And also this alpha and beta are probability amplitudes, and they tell us how much of the state is in zero and how much of the state is in one. Now these probability amplitudes, they can be any complex number, provided that they satisfy this normalization condition. Mod alpha squared plus mod beta squared is equal to one. This is to ensure that whatever measurements we do in the future on this state, we get correct probabilities out. Another very useful representation of quantum states is using the Bloch sphere. This is a visual representation that gives us a very intuitive um, representation and a very intuitive way of thinking about quantum states. So a Bloch sphere is a three-dimensional sphere. We have uh, uh, here the x-axis, here the y-axis, and the vertical is the z-axis. And all the states are given as points on the surface of this sphere, parameterized by this angle theta and this angle phi. So then the state psi can be written in the following form, where the probability amplitude for uh, basis state zero is given by cos theta over two, and the probability amplitude for basis state one is given by this complex phase e to the i phi times sine of theta over two. So this is a general state, but let's look at some examples. So we've got these states 0 and 1, which we have already encountered, and they sit at the north and the south pole of the Bloch sphere. We also said that we can have an arbitrary superposition of 0 and 1. For example, we can have a plus state, which is given as equal superposition of 0 and 1. Or we can have its friend on the other side of the uh, Bloch sphere, the minus state, which is as equal superposition, but this time it's 0 minus 1. And equally, we can also have uh, two states on the y-axis, one is called the psi i, the other one is minus i, and they're given by this state. Here you can see that, again, it's an equal superposition of 0 and 1, but this time the phase between 0 and 1 is given by a complex number i. This concludes step 1.